Tournament Central atop Hancock Stadium at Illinois State University here in Normal, Illinois. You'll meet my associate shortly. For the sixth year now, the Illinois High School Association has conducted statewide football tournaments. We'll be bringing you all the action in the two games remaining to be played, one this afternoon and the other tonight. Based on student body size, there are five different classes in the IHSA football tournaments. All told, more than 500 teams participated in the playoffs, along with at large entrance, champions from more than 70 football conferences began the five-class playoffs following the ninth week of regular season play this fall. The conference affiliation and the average size of the student bodies within a league or conference determines the class a school plays in. To arrive at the average conference enrollment, the largest and smallest schools in the league are discounted. Then the average student body size of the remaining schools in the conference determines the class into which any given school is assigned. With us to assist in our coverage is Floyd Brown. How about an update? Thank you, Bob. To get a fix on where things stand, let's take a look at yesterday's scoring. In the first game, Hampshire defeated Shenoa by a score of 34 to 8. This one decided the Class 1A tournament championship among schools with an average student enrollment of less than 296. Class 2A competition is made up of schools with average student bodies between 296 and 547. In our second Friday game, the crown went to Decatur St. Teresa over Amboy by a 36 to 12 score. The 3A statewide honors went to Mascuda when they downed Morris 7 to 6. The 3A class comes from schools with average student enrollments between 548 and 1158. Well, so much for the Friday play. The third member of our coverage team is Mike Bile. Mike? Thank you, Floyd. In our game this afternoon, we'll have the 4A final between Wheaton North and LaSalle, Peru. This class embraces schools with an average student body between 1,159 and 2,029. And tonight, the fifth championship game in our series is between St. Lawrence of Burbank and East St. Louis Senior High School. This one will be for the 5A crown. All of the schools that competed in the 5A class have an average student body of more than 2,029. And that's it for now. Floyd? And now from Tournament Central, it's time to bring you an update on the teams competing for the Class 4A State Football Championship. The Wheaton North High School Falcons come from DuPage County, 115 miles to the north, east of Normal. And the LaSalle Peru Cavaliers hail from LaSalle, 65 miles north of Normal. Let's take a look at that Wheaton North Ball Club, coached by James Rexilius first. The captains are Rich Stockniak, Dave Burston, Mark Eisenhart, and John Flaherty. Wheaton North lost its first game of the season, but they've been getting better every set. And they have really improved through the season. Their quarterback, Charles Long, is a tall enough kid to see his receivers. He passes well, but they like to run, and they're going to have some difficulty today because they are the smaller of the two teams, and they're going to be running against a big line from St. Lawrence. And speaking of St. Lawrence, what about him today, Mike? Well, they're playing LaSalle, Peru today. Um... Floyd and the Cavaliers, the early favors for the 4A title, hope their lucky number is three. It's their third consecutive appearance in the 4A title game, losing both previous appearances to four-time titleist Joliet Catholic. The Cavaliers are a big team anchored by 250-pound Jeff Ostrowski and 210-pound Mike Noblock, both All-Staters. And if you want to watch this game today, watch the play up front in the trenches. This will be a great game on the line. It certainly will be a great game, too, and now to get things underway, let's take you to the side of the field where Bob Starr is standing by. We'll have the uh, starting lineups and opening kickoff for you shortly, but first, here is the national anthem. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and sing the national anthem. Thank you. 
to bring you the opening lineups, here is Floyd Brown. Well, thank you very much, Bob Starr. LaSalle Peru won the coin toss a few minutes ago and has elected to receive, and they'll be defending the North goal. First, the starting lineup coming up on defense in just a moment will be introducing the Wheaton North Ball Club. As you can see down on the field, the Wheaton North Ball Club will be in the white jerseys, while the LaSalle Peru Cavaliers will be in the red jerseys as they line up down on the field. This 4A championship perennially is a very good game, and today we're delighted because this is the best weather we've had since 1974 and the first game that we had down here. These are two powerful teams, and we anticipate seeing some very good football. It'll be hard to beat the 3A championship we had last night, but I'm certain that they will be able to. And now, for Wheaton North on defense, at left end, number 72, Dave Burston. At left tackle, number 40, Brad Campbell. At right tackle, number 68, Dave Herda. At right end, number 63, Bob Reese. At linebacker, number 70, Rich Stockniak. At linebacker, number 42, Sean Young. Linebacker, number 11, Andy Helmick. Defensive back, number 62, Tom Spikowski. Defensive back, number 28, John Andes. Number 24 at defensive back, Mike Landreth. And at safety, number 20, Mark Eisenhart. And now the coach of the Wheaton North Falcons, James Rexilius. And now for the LaSalle Peru Cavaliers, their offensive lineup. At left end, number 84, Mike Bassador. At left tackle, number 72, Bob Baker. At left guard, 68, Joe Pearson. At center, number 55, George Cassop. At right guard, number 62, Mike Noblock. At right tackle, number 75, Jeff Ostrowski. At right end, number 83, Andy Peterson. The quarterback, number 13, Jim Piscono. At halfback, number 42, Pete Bray. Flanker back, number 31, Scott Quitt. And at the fullback, number 43, Camilo Valley. And the coach for the LaSalle Perot Cavaliers, Joe Marini. Well, there you have the starting lineup for these two very fine ball clubs as they prepare to go for the Class 4A championship and to bring you all the exciting play-by-play -play for today's first game. Remember, we'll have a second tonight for the 5A championship is... Bob Starr. Thank you, Floyd Brown. We have a great day for football in normal. It is cool, wind is blowing, and could become a factor. And I would think, Mike Pyle, in the punting game, especially the way the breeze is blowing to the north, to the open end of the stadium here, that it could indeed become a factor before the afternoon is over. The, uh, the punters could have some trouble with it. Bob, there's another factor in the punting game. I was down on the field before the game, and the sun coming in, it's south of here, and it's just noontime or 1 o'clock now. That sun, it's almost impossible to see a punt as you look up into that sun. So the team to the north end, as we can see, of course, the team to the south end has both the wind and that sun advantage uh, of catching punts. Of course, their receivers have to look at it, but it's not as bad as it would be in a punt situation. Both the sun and the wind could be factors. The kickoff man for Wheaton North is number 44, Marvin Carter. Back deep to return for LaSalle, Peru. 
are Randy Freshy, number 32, and Rich Serafini. You see the Wheaton North Falcons lined up. If you're not with us in color, those colors are blue and white. So the boot is a good one for the 4A championship, and it goes all the way back to Randy Freshy. Takes it about the three. Out to the 20 and spinning and gets out to around the 22-yard line before he is finally brought down. Coming down to make the stop for Wheaton North was Mark Eisenhardt. He's a co-captain, 5'7", 147-pound senior, number 20, and he made the initial hit. And it's first down out at the 21-yard line for LaSalle, Peru. Bob, we saw a larger Morris team last night go to a straight T formation against Mascuda. And I wouldn't be surprised to see LaSalle, Peru do the same thing today if they get their running game going. They line up in the power eye, strong to the right side. Pistono is the quarterback. They bang it out to about the 25, 26, 27-yard line. On the carry was Camilo, Camilo Valley, the fullback. Strung some tacklers with him before he was finally brought down, making the stop. Dave Burston, another one of the co-captains for Wheaton. And you're getting a look at the first play of the game, the big fullback, Camilo Valley, who uh, did gain somewhere around 1,000 yards this year, 1,260 to be exact. Picked up about five, second down and five from their own 27. To the tailback this time, and they break it up the middle across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Good pop right up the pipe on the carry was Pete Bray. Okay, let's watch Pete Bray straight ahead. Boy, look at the whole great blocking. Pete Bray gained almost 1,000 yards this year, and he only played nine games, was hurt for three of them. Take a look at the linebackers set up for Wheaton North. They're running a, a 5-6-2 now. They bring the corner linebackers up, pop to the fullback again, and Valley is across the 40 to around the 41-yard line. On the stop, number 70, Rich Stackniak. He's 160 pounds. They'll mark it at the 41. That's a gain of about five more, second down and five, and LaSalle Peru is banging him out five yards at a crack. They had difficulty last year, as we all remember, with Joliet Catholic and losing third year that Joe Marini has been downer with this club and hoping for better luck this time. Again, Valley across the 45 for the 47 to the 48-yard line. Number 20 on the tackle, Mark Eisenhardt. Getting off the bottom of the pile is number 28, and that is John Andes, 160-pound senior. They'll mark it at about the 48-yard line. Another first down for LaSalle, Peru. Bob, that's what's known as testing the defense. Every play they've run has been straight ahead, and they've gained yards on every play. They run the wide man out of your view up to the top of the screen, and that is number 41 who is Mike Stashik. They spin it out across the 50. Carrying was Pete Bray, number 42. They get it into Wheaton territory just across midfield near the 49-yard line. A gain of about three, second down and seven, and this will be the longest yardage they've had to go for on second down. Yes, it has, and, and that 4-4 defense that, uh, that Wheaton is playing leaves a lot of room in that middle. The linebackers line up behind the tackles. They've got to fill that hole, and they haven't been doing it so far. Doug Regner is the wide man, and they give it up the middle, and this time Bray is hit and stopped after a gain of about a yard. Good hard tackle made there by number 66, and that is Keith Cote. He's a defensive tackle, 201-pounder. He's 5'10". So they got about a yard. It'll be third down, still about six yards to go. The ball resting around the 48-yard line of Wheaton North. This is the 4A championship game. Just underway, nine minutes to play first quarter. LaSalle Peru in the red jerseys and the white pants with the green trim. Stono wanting to throw, rushed and hit and stopped back at around the 44-yard line on the sack. They got a good charge on him. Let's take a look at the rush. The defense on the first pass play of the game. Well, there's just a missed pickup on that. And Pistono had to hit the turf. Tom Spikulski is number 62. It was coming hard from that defensive right side. So now, LaSalle Peru has to kick it out of there. The punter is Pete Bray. Hangs it up in good shape. Good coverage time. Fair catch is called for and taken back at around the 30-yard line. On the reception end of it was number 85, and that is Rich McDonald. So Wheaton finally staved off the drive of LaSalle, Peru, getting a sack in the process and forcing them to punt, and Wheaton takes over on their own 30-yard line. Wheaton is our size in this game, and it'll be interesting to see if they can handle that size. There's a timeout on the field with no score, and our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue after this. So 
Those young ladies from LaSalle, Peru, cheering their team on down below us. Dressed in the white and the green and the red, the Christmas colors. Wheaton North, their first possession. They come out of their quarterback is Charles Long. He's 6'3", 170 pounders. They run out of the slot eye. The tailback gets the first chance at it and gets a tough couple of yards as they drive him back. That is Sean Young. An interesting statistic here. The offensive line of Wheaton weighs 183. The defensive line of LaSalle, Peru, averages 220. A 37 pound per man average. The biggest guy out there, Jeff Ostrowski, number 75 for LaSalle, Peru, leading the charge on the tackle. Helped out by lineba linebacker uh, number 30, Herb Reese. Gain of a couple of yards, second down and eight for Wheaton North. On their own 32-yard line, second down and eight to the tailback again as they change and nowhere to go that time. Boy, they nailed him. On the carry, it was Mark Seelan. And he was nailed in a hurry after a pickup of one yard, and they really drilled him down. Third down and about seven yards to go. They're running alternate tailbacks in there. The previous ball carrier, I beg your pardon, was Lewis Holland. And Charles Long wants to throw, being rushed. Rostrowski gets gives chase, but Long has some room to pick up some room. Now 35 at about the 37-yard line, and Herb Reese, number 30, finally dragged him down. It'll be short of a first down. Long scrambling for everything he could get. Mike was really in trouble. And Herb Reese showed an awful lot of speed. He plays linebacker. He's a wing back on offense, plays linebacker on defense, and he shows his speed. Look at the scramble there. Charles Brad. Long running, and there comes, there's the tackle by Reese. Brad Campbell is the punter for Wheaton North. Fourth down and four situation as he gets it away with the win, angling, end over end, bounding away and over the receiver, but finally take it in there. Trying to turn the corner and coming back up is Randy Freshy and forced out of bounds around the 20, 21 yard line. Good punt coverage. Down on the stop, number 63, Bob Reese. He's a 5'9, 184 pound senior for Wheaton North. 52 yard punt with the win, and that's what we were talking about. We have a flag on the play and a clip apparently against LaSalle, Peru, but that is where the wind is going to come into play on the, the punting game here this afternoon. There's a timeout on the field with no score in our coverage of the state high school football. Two good-sized quarterbacks in this game. 6'3", 170, Charles Long for Wheaton North, and Jim Pistono for LaSalle, Peru, 6'3", 180 pounds. He's under center right now. They work the power eye, strong right, balance line. Good hit and nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Coming up on the carry was Camilo Valley, and the defensive front for Wheaton North nailed him in a hurry. Leading the charge appeared to be number 72, Dave Burston. There's only a 12-pound difference in the size of the line here. The Wheaton defensive line averages 192. The offensive line of LaSalle Peru, 204, just 12 pounds per man. Number 63, Bob Reese in there, 184-pounder, 5'9", playing a defensive tackle on the stop as well. Second down and 11. They pitch to Pete Bray, and he's not going to be able to go anywhere. And coming over in a hurry was Rich Stachniak, 5'6", 160 pounds, number 70. He led the charge for... Wheaton North, look at number 70, the linebacker here. Let's watch Dakniak. He is the, the leader on defense, a 160-pound linebacker, and plays guard on offense. They say he's the best trap blocker coach has ever seen. So it brings up third down and long now. Third down and still 10 yards to go. Coming out wide to the right side, number 41. That's Mike Stashik. Up the middle comes Bray, and he doesn't get the first down. It's to about the 13, 14 yard line before he was brought down, but not able to do anything. Watch Stachniak blow the gap there, which gave a little running room, but number 42, Sean Young, running back on offense, came in to make the stop and save that uh, play, giving a fourth down situation to LaSalle Peru. Pete Bray is to do the punting, and here is a situation now where Wheaton should be able to take advantage of the win and pick up some yardage in the exchange of punts. Bray does a good job of getting it out end over end as best he can, but it is called for on the fair catch at around the 38-39 yard line by number 85, Rich McDonald, and look at the difference in the yardage now picked up. 
Wheaton North had to punt from back around their 35-yard line. Mike, they exchange punts, hold LaSalle Peru on defense, and force them to punt, and now wind up in LaSalle Peru territory at the 38-yard line. Well, we're getting a look at the Wheaton coaching staff over on the sideline, talking to their players, and uh, the wind and sun again. Bob is the factor there. Charles Long on the bootleg to the left wants to throw deep. It is too long for the intended receiver, number 82, John Flaherty. He's 5'9", 190 pounder. That's another thing the quarterback has to contend with, throwing with the wind. He's going to get a little aid in so doing and sometimes have to temper his throwing just a bit. The LaSalle Peru punt was 25 yards as opposed to the Wheaton punt of 52 yards. The Wheaton North team uh, has had some injuries. Uh, both running backs are backup men. Brad Campbell is in at fullback for Marvin Carter, who is hurt, and Sean Young in for Mike, uh, Mark Eisenhardt, who must be injured. Pitch to the halfback trailing around the right side, number 25, and that is Lewis Holland, and he is drilled down at about the 36-yard line. They got some people out there. Number 31 getting off the pile is Scott Quitt, and number 68 also out on the hit was Joe Pearson, and one of the LaSalle Peru players shaken up on the play. I don't see Jeff Ostrowski down there, and I have a sneaking hunch it may be number 75. The big 255 or 50 pound tackle for LaSalle Peru. A gain on the previous play of about three yards. Third down and about seven to go near the 35 yard line of LaSalle Peru for Wheaton North. Wheaton North comes in with an 11 and one record. They lost their first game of the year to Arlington Forest View 14 13. They won the rest of them. On the other hand LaSalle Peru is 12 and 0. We might point out that uh, Arlington Forest View is a 5A team. So the only game they lost was to a 5A team. And the score of that game, well, it was pretty close when they lost by a point, 14 to 13. And I believe you're right, Bob, that it is Jeff Ostrowski that is down. And that would be a real blow to the LaSalle Peru team. Jeff Ostrowski, everybody's all-stater on all all-state teams, first team all-state. 250 pound Joe Marini says the best tackle he has ever seen and LaSalle Peru's had some pretty good linemen over the years now Joe Marini wasn't around when Joe Rutkins played down there <laughs> including Ostrowski's older brother who was a right. dandy and the, his dad Joe Rutkins and I were all state together and I played oh, against yeah. him for about seven years in the National <laughs> Football League and I know how good he was <laughs> Jeff Ostrowski is up on his feet they're looking over uh, his right forearm right wrist elbow he may have injured that right arm a little bit. So he will come out of the ball game. You know, uh, hopefully not serious and be able to get back in there. That's right. To tell the whole story about him, you know, there are five brothers and all of them are college football players. And Jeff is the youngest and their dad, Chet Ostrowski, played with Weber in Chicago, Notre Dame and the Washington Redskins. And uh, Mike, it's the wonder you didn't play against a couple of the brothers because you played forever around here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever wrestle any of the Ostrowskis? No, but I wrestled Joe Rutkins in the semifinals of the state championship. Oh, did you really? <laughs> I remember that one. Joe only weighed about 260 back when he was in high school. <laughs> Charles Long is running at quarterback. They go with the slot eye. Give to Sean Young some room at the 30, 25. Cuts it to the outside. A flag is down. He cuts back inside. Nifty running by Sean Young. Down to the 15-yard line for Wheaton North. Finally making the stop for LaSalle Peru is Bob Baker. Defensive tackle, six footer, 200, and it may be called back. Notice how Wheaton North went right after that, uh, right where Ostrowski would normally be on the first play after he left the game. Procedure call against Wheaton is going to nullify the game. It was 20 yards picked up, and Sean Young so showed some fine moves. Okay, let's see who is in motion there. Pretty hard to pick out who uh, might have been moving there just before the snap. Good call by the officials. Third down now, 13, just shy of the 40-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. Good nifty running here by Sean Young. He so showed fine moves. He's 5'10", 175 pounds. Wide man to the right side is Juan Ortiz, the top of your string. High formation behind Charles Long. Wants to throw on third down and 13. Going deep. Ortiz had slipped and fallen, got back to his feet, and back on the defense. 
covering and getting a hand on it was Randy Freshy, number 32. But Ortiz seemed to stumble somewhere around the 15-yard line, Mike, and uh, really took himself out of the pattern. Here you see Long taking advantage of being with the wind in the first quarter. And Ortiz tripped over number 31. Now Scott quit, who was going back into the secondary on coverage. And they got tangled up a bit. Brad Campbell to do the punting. He could nail LaSalle Peru back deep. He gets a good one off. Angles toward the far sideline. Gets a bounce into the end zone for the touchback. And so LaSalle Peru gets a break there. He was angling for that sideline. Could not get it to bounce out for him. And LaSalle Peru will take over on their own 20. Here's the pass play again with Long. Now you see there's Ortiz way up in the right corner. There's the, uh, well, not really a trip, but uh, stumbling <laughs> over the foot of the defender. We can't call it a trip, can we? It'll be first down for LaSalle Peru on their own 20-yard line. No score. Three minutes, 18 seconds to play. First quarter of this 4A championship game. Pistono at quarterback to Pete Bray on the pitch. He is down at about the 20, 21 perhaps, but no more than that. Okay, let's watch the, the tackle. These teams both Hitting hard. This is the big game right there. That is a good tackle. Head on. Turn to the bottom there. That is 42 Sean Young, who just turned in a fine run, and he turned in a good hit there. Got about a yard, second down and nine on their own 21-yard line. There he is, Sean Young, running back and linebacker. To Pete Bray again, and he gets only about a yard, if that much. Coming in on the stop, number 40, Brad Campbell. As we get into the 4A and 5A class, you don't see as many players going both ways, but some of the outstanding players on both the LaSalle Peru team and the Wheaton North team, you will see going both ways, like the two All-Staters on LaSalle Peru, No Block and Ostrowski, and Rich Stakniak and Young on uh, Wheaton North. They run the counter back to the 25-yard line. On the carry coming back was Tim Waters, but he got to only the 25-yard line. He was tripped up there. And so it'll still be fourth down and about five yards to go for LaSalle Peru, and they'll have to punt into that wind okay, again. Wheaton North stands a chance of getting there's your the short uh, reverse ball again. Rich Stakniak made the stop, number 70. Tim Waters carried the ball on that play. Pete Bray back to do the punting. Number 85 is Rich McDonald in single safety, standing at midfield for Wheaton North. Hangs it out away from him, hooked it to the side. It's going to be not very good at all and out of bounds at the 31-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. And now a big break here for Wheaton North if they can take advantage of it. Excellent field position from which to work. The punt, good for what? No more than five, six, seven six yards. Six yards. Six yards on that punt. Boy, it looked like it got in the air, and it's just like a golf shot. The wind grabbed it and just turned it back once it started to go to the left. Like my golf shot, right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a report on Jeff Ostrowski, who injured his right elbow. They think it might be a possible dislocation, and I'm sure they're working on him right now. That would be a real blow if his elbow is dislocated. Charles Long at quarterback. They give on the straight dive straight ahead. Sean Young on the quick pop. They got it down to about the 25, 26-yard line, a gain of almost five yards on the play. Let's watch the offensive line coming off the ball. Good charge, good charge, good uh, driving that defense back. Second down and about five yards to go at the 21-yard line. They go with the slot man to the left side and pitch back to Campbell. Campbell is hit and dropped as he got inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. And number 70 coming up on the hit, or number 72, I should say, it was Bob Baker, the defensive tackle. Not much gain on the play. Third down, still four. For Wheaton North, just inside the LaSalle Peru 25-yard line. We have Sean, Sean Young in the backfield along with Brad Campbell. Charles Long is the quarterback. To Campbell again, slanting to the right again. Baker's there getting some help. The red jerseys filter in. They stop him short of the first down. Linebacking help coming in as well. Baker getting off the pile, Reese. Number 68 for LaSalle, Peru, Joe Pearson, a 5'10", 220-pound junior. So now, big 
fourth down, fourth and two at the 22-yard line of LaSalle, Peru for Wheaton North. Off to Sean Young, struggling inside the 20, still on his feet, inside the 15, and down to about the 14-yard line goes Sean Young, dragging tacklers with him, showing good power. Number 41 is Mike Stashik on the stop, along with number 31, Scott Quitt, coming up from the second let's watch. Let's watch Sean Young here. Tremendous drive. He really does it on his own. Just stays on his feet, gets hit by about five different players. All right, let's watch it here. The offensive line coming off. There's Sean Young. Now we get a chance to see the second effort on his part. Broke a tackle there. Got an extra couple of yards. So we have come to the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first period of play, there's no score, and our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue after this. Well, LaSalle, Peru is now under the gun, and there is Jeff Ostrowski down on the sideline, the big defense, uh, offensive and defensive tackle. And he has uh, an injured elbow. We'll get more on it later. LaSalle, Peru under the gun. Sean Young on the slant. Bangs to around the 10, stacked up around the 10 or maybe the 9-yard line. But the kicking game has been a factor here. On the stop, coming over was Scott Quitt, number 31. Slant that thing off the left tackle. There's... Sean Young again. He's getting an awful lot of duty this afternoon. He's a tough runner, isn't he? Boy, he really is. He really goes after. Second down at about five, just inside the 10-yard line. Uh, Sweeten North threatens to score. The pitch to Holland. To the five, and touchdown. Number 25, Lewis Holland. Great speed. And for the score. And so Wheaton North takes advantage of the four punt. Gave them the ball at the 31-yard line of LaSalle, Peru, to start the drive. Let's take a look at Lewis Holland here. A nice job of running. He's got good blocking out in front of him. There's a nice block. Great big tackle, Norm Reed. Let's watch Norm Reed, the tackle on this block. Number 74. There it is on the right side of your screen. Puts him right on his back. He's a 223-pounder. Point after try coming from Tom Hessling. It is up. Good. 11 minutes and 24 seconds to play in this first half. Wheaton North draws first blood. There's a timeout on the field with the score now. Wheaton North 7, LaSalle, Peru, nothing in our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue after this. For information about special services for the disabled, call area code 312-727-4421, collect or your Illinois Bell Service representative. Now, as the punting game was bothered by the wind in that first period, as uh, LaSalle Peru could not punt it that well into a pretty heavy breeze, the kickoff may be the same. Marvin Carter to boot for Wheaton North, number 44. Randy Freshy is back, and this one is going to be taken by number 22, Rich Serafini. At the 30. Lewis Holland has him and finally drags him down at about the 35-yard line. But here again, good field position because you just can't boot that thing very far, Mike, into this breeze the way it is. Well, he took that kick on the 20-yard line. Just to give you an idea of what the punting was in the first quarter, LaSalle Peru had three punts for a total of 56 yards, whereas Wheaton North's two punts averaged 46 yards. So wind is definitely going to be a, a big factor. Jim Pastono on the keep. Gets it out to the 40-yard line, near the 40-yard line, before he is stopped, coming off the pile, number 70. That is Rich Stachniak. Okay. There's Pistono on the option play, decides to turn it up. Little running room. Whoops, I think he should have kept going straight ahead. Okay, let's watch him again. Now they're bringing back that counter, man, which does hold a couple of defenders in. Run the power eye, strong right. And they give to the fullback, and he bangs his way up to about the 50-yard line. Number 43 is Camilo Valley. He's a strong runner, 5'11", 198, dragging tacklers, getting up to about midfield. That's a first down for LaSalle, Peru. Wheaton North drive for the touchdown, covered 31 yards in six plays, and as we recall, it followed a... Uh, 
a short six-yard punt for the field position. To the tailback, Pete Bray, and down to about the 46-yard line goes Bray. He was wrapped up by Bob Reese, the defensive guard, defensive tackle, 5'9", 184 pounds, number 63, a flag on the play, and let's see what the call is here. Procedure call, legal motion. So that will nullify the gain, a gain of about four yards on the play. Got an interesting note on Pistano. He was thrust into the starting role this year as the quarterback for the LaSalle Peru team. Last year's starting quarterback was injured and decided not to play football this year. And he put on about 25 pounds and grew a couple of inches over the summer. How's that for preparing for a job? <laughs> and, and he didn't grow awkward, and he's playing good football at quarterback. If I'd have known you could do that, I would have done that myself. <laughs> Pistano back to throw now. Heaving it deep down there and incomplete, intended for Darren Delaney. Delaney, number 82, down deep, just off his fingertips on that second and 15. Okay, let's watch this play. The defender uh, pretty close to the receiver. Let's see if uh, he does. How close we have to uh, interference. Let's see if we get a look at it. There he's put it. He's got an arm up there, which could be face guarding, but it looks like he is going for the ball, which is all you have to do. If you're going for the ball and not just sticking a hand up in the air, it's legal. Second down, 15. Pistono pitching to Pete Bray. The sweep needs a block, doesn't get it. Piling in there, number 42, Sean Young. Half back on offense and a linebacker on defense, and he is a hitter, man. He's all over the field. He'll get after you. Speaking of people who uh, gained some weight, Floyd, the all-stater on the Wheaton North team, Dave Burstan, who plays left end on defense, he gained 35 pounds from last year to this year, did it all in a weightlifting program, and uh, he was second in the Illinois AAU powerlifting for teenagers. Uh, I'd like to give you some of those lifts in a couple of minutes. Pistono on third and 15. Going down the left side, and it is broken up, incomplete, intended for Scott Quitt, number 31. And back deep on the coverage, John Andes for one. That was an excellent play on Scott Quitt's part. He could have been intercepted there. Okay, here's Pistono back to pass. They can throw that ball long with that wind, but didn't have a man open. Scott Quitt was the intended receiver. So now here's a chance for LaSalle Peru to take advantage of the breeze. Brian McDonald, or Rich McDonald, I should say, back deep to receive as Pete Bray will do the punting for LaSalle Peru. He's punting with the win. Hits it well and hangs it out. McDonald will have a chance to field it, drops it, and finally nailed back around the three, four yard line. We're gonna check on the number on who was down in a hurry to nail him. And it was Herb Reese, number 30. And there's a timeout on the field with a score. Wheaton North 7, LaSalle Peru nothing. And our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue after this. Now LaSalle Peru with a chance to take advantage of good punt coverage. They have nailed Wheaton North back at their own four-yard line. Charles Long coming under center, 6'3", 170-pounder. He has Sean Young and Brad Campbell of the running backs. And Sean Young gets the call and nowhere to go. Number 68 leading the charge from the defensive line, Joe Pearson. 220-pounder, helped stack it up. Got about a half yard maybe to near the five. Second down and still nine yards to go. Mike, this is the time you have to take advantage if you're a good defensive team and take advantage of this field position. Well, that's right. LaSalle Peru's punt was 41 yards, a little bit better than the first quarter, and we also saw the receiver, McDonald, drop the ball. I don't know if the sun got in his eyes or not, but he couldn't hang on to it. Andes is wide to the left side. They give to Campbell the fullback, and he spins down to around the five, the line of scrimmage, and no more. The LaSalle Peru defense doing exactly as you might expect. They know they got a chance to really nail him down and force them to kick in, and... Uh, pick up some tough yardage. Number 22 coming off the pile is Rich Serafini coming up from the secondary. Number 31, Scott Quitt, both on the stop. The ball resting still just beyond the five-yard line. Third down and uh, better than eight yards to go, almost nine. Keith, Keith Cody there making a block, and that's good, uh, good work by Arnie Harris showing us some of that line play. The pitch to Holland, and he is down. Good defensive play again coming up from the secondary. 
was number 22, who made the first hit, Rich Serafini. And number 62, Mike Noblock, getting a piece of it also. So they do exactly what they wanted to do. They force Wheaton North to punt from deep in their own territory around the eight-yard line. A fourth down and still better than six yards to go for the first down. And a good chance for LaSalle Peru to pick up some valuable field position. Serafini, number 22, back in single safety. Up on the left side is Dale Piaja. Campbell gets it away into the wind. See, look at that thing hang up. Takes Boy. a backward bounce. Whoa. It'll be at the 25 or 26-yard line, and that is where LaSalle Peru will put it in play only an 18-yard punt. And this is exactly, I'm not saying we told you so, Mike, but you just had to know as you looked at the flags here and felt the breeze that it was going to have an effect on things here in this 4A championship game. Yeah, and a lot will depend on the coaching strategy. Knowing that you have that uh, advantage when you're with the wind, it's can you hold them when you're going against the wind? Can you score when you're with the wind? A lot of coaching strategy here. Off to Pete Bray. Bray spinning and getting inside the 20, down to around the 18-yard line before he was finally dragged down. Okay, good run this time. The fullback. Getting that ball late. He's deep on that uh, on that I formation. Pete Bray. Tom P Spikulski, number 62, making the stop. It is second down and about three yards to go at the 18-yard line of Wheaton North. LaSalle Peru with a quick handoff to the fullback diving in. Camilo Valley does not pick up the first down. Gets to around the 11-yard line as that Wheaton North defense shores up, forces him down. Sean Young, number 42, off the bottom of the pile is number 72. Dave Burston, the defensive left end, 6'2", 223, who was leading the charge. So it brings up third down and still about two yards to go. Just inside the 18-yard line of Wheaton North. LaSalle Peru trailing here, 7 nothing, five minutes and 55 seconds to play in the first half. LaSalle Peru now in the power eye. To the fullback. And he's not going to get the first down, I don't think. It is near the 10-yard line. It'll be shy of it, however. And he will not pick up the first down as Valley was stacked up. They submarined under there. Good defensive play. Campbell, number Let's 40, number 42, Sean Young, both on the stop. The defensive line, good penetration on their part, stacking up that line. LaSalle Peru needs a yard. Fourth down and a yard to go at the 11-yard line of Wheaton, or 15-yard, 16-yard line of Wheaton North. The fullback gets it. Let's see where the penetration goes. Did Wheaton North hold? They seem to indicate they did. And he did. They Number held. 72, Dave Burston made the stop. The defensive left end. A good play here. Okay, let's take a look at this. Boy, I'll tell you, penetration by that Wheaton North defensive line is just great. Floyd Brown was talking about the strength, and Mike was talking about the strength of Burston. He showed his strength there. He took a hard-charging fullback, stood him up and dragged him back and did not let him well, pick first. up the first down at the 15. So there's a timeout on the field with the score. Wheaton North 7, LaSalle Peru nothing, and our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue after this. First down coming up for Wheaton North, just outside their own 15-yard line. You know, the coach rated this kid first, and we were talking about him. Number 72 says he is an outstanding student and going to make a great college prospect. Very, very strong. Wheaton North coming out in their straight T now. Seen a little bit of this in the last game or so. Sean Young on the straight dive, taking the handoff. Gets a couple of three yards out to around the 15, uh, 17, 18 yard line. On the stop, number 52. That is Dwayne Potoff. 6'1, 195 pound senior for. LaSalle, Peru, gain of about four, they say, second down, and slightly better than six yards to go. They go back to their slot formation now. Sealand is the slot man on the left, number 15. Holland takes the hand, or it is uh, Sean Young taking the handoff, cuts back in across the 20 to around the 23-yard line, driven down. He didn't, did not pick up the first down. He will be two or three yards shy. Baker is number 72, getting off the pile for LaSalle, Peru. Holding down the right side for this LaSalle Peru team are the Potoff, uh, their cousins, Dennis Potoff and Dwayne Potoff. Coach says they're both very quiet. They stay together. They're best of friends, and they do an excellent job in the line together. It's third down and two now at the 24-yard line. Now Wheaton North. 
with the Falcons in possession. Fake to Campbell, and Long is going to keep it and picks up the first down to around the 29-yard line. On the stop was Randy Freshy coming up from the secondary, number 32, but a good piece of faking on the part of Long. He did a nice job of hiding that football all the way in that play. He faked to it running back and then hit the football well. Let's take a look at it. There's the fake handoff, and there he is hiding it behind him. Picked up a few yards. Wheaton North moving out of the shadow of their own goal post out to their 29-yard line. Into the middle it comes to Sean Young to the 30, 35, to the 40, still on his feet, and finally driven out of bounds on the far side by Dwayne Pothoff, number 52. Good piece of running. I tell you, Sean Young shows me something in the broken field, Mike. Boy, he's a hard runner. He's a hard runner. He breaks tackles, does not give up, good balance, stays on his feet. And let's see, there was a flag that went down. Let's see if we can pick up the infraction here, right at the uh, point of tackle. That looks to me like there's a clip there. Late hit by the Wheaton North player. Comes back from the point of the infraction. It'll move the ball back to the 31-yard line. 17-yard run for Sean Young, nullified by the penalty. Moves it back to the 31-yard line. Some of the fans looking on, dressed for the weather. It is cool, chilly, breezy here at Illinois State University at Hancock Stadium. A little equipment problem there on the part of Mike Noblock. Six-footer, 210-pounder for LaSalle, Peru, and he needs, what, a chin strap? They'll make a quick change. Number 76 is Jay Tungett, 6'2", 191. Good size on the part of both these football teams. You know, the good hands on this quarterback, Charles Long, is an indication of what kind of an athlete he is. He's outstanding in basketball and in baseball. Just a good all-around player. Fine quarterback, too. He Ten. brings him out of there. They Ten. go with Sealand on the left, left wing. The pitch to Lewis Holland. Ripped down at about the 35, 36, 37 yard line. Dwayne Potoff was out there. They'll mark it down at around the 38. So it'll bring up. I'm surprised that uh, Wheat North didn't run to their right side that time. You had both uh, Ostrowski and Noblock, the two uh, All-Staters, out of the game, and they play on the same side, but they elected to go the other way. Second down and one situation. Off to Sean Young. Straight power dive across the 40 to around the 43. Just a straight handoff and wedge blocking as they powered it out of there. Coming off the bottom of the pile, number 77, and that is Dennis Potoff. On the stop for LaSalle, Peru, but it's a first down for Wheaton North. Just outside their own 43-yard line. They lead 7-0, 2.45 to play here in the first half of the 4A championship game. White man to the right side is John Flaherty. He's number 82, splitting off just a couple of yards on the right side. Back to Sean Young. Good hit that time. He got a couple of yards to around the 45-yard line, but no more. Coming in was number 22, Rich Serafini, leading the charge from the secondary. Okay. Here we see the pitch to Sean Young following his blocking. Ooh, did he run into a wall? 22 and 32, Serafini and Randy Freshy, the other hitter. Gain of a couple, second down, about eight yards to go at their own 45. So Wheaton North has done a good job of getting out of the shadow of their own goalpost after they'd been nailed deep. They held on a fourth down, along with the screen pass set up, and it is complete. And finally drilled out of bounds on the far side, complete to Mark Eisenhart over on the far side, but could not turn it into a long gainer. Dwayne Pothoff stayed at home there, and he was right on the play, wasn't he? Watch the execution. There he is looking off to the right. Now comes around back to the other side. That's a good way to set up the screen. That's but Pot it was off. followed all the way by Pothoff. There we see Pothoff going up. Ooh, tried to get a hand on that yeah. ball, but couldn't. Recovers and makes the tackle. So now it is third down at 11. They lost... Little yardage on the play back at their own 42. Lost about three to Sean Young. Hit at 45, struggles forward across the 45, and finally is put down by Randy Freshy, number 32, at around the 47-yard line. That is a punting situation now for Wheaton North. Okay. Let's look at this play. Young again. He's carrying the ball almost every play. 
That's Bob Baker that just missed that tackle or got his hands on him. He's the one that's replaced uh, Jeff Ostrowski. The most important part about this drive on Wheaton North's part is they ate up the clock in this second quarter when LaSalle Peru had the win, and that's what they need to do, keep the ball out of LaSalle Peru's hands. Campbell to punt. Into oh. the win, short kick. Then finally covered around the 41-yard line. It'll be LaSalle Peru's football on their own 41-yard line. Only a 12-yard punt, and that is uh, nothing to be embarrassed about. The wind is really going to play havoc here today. We'll pause now. Five seconds for station identification. WGN Television, Chicago. LaSalle Peru trailing 7-0. To the fullback, and into the middle comes Valley, struggling forward across the 45 to around the 48, 49. A host of white jerseys on his back, dragging them with him. Coming off the bottom of the pile, the first hitter on the play was Rich Stackniak, getting some help. Delay to Valley, the fullback. Good blocking by his offensive line and a nice hole. You see Pistano looking at the clock. He knows that time is a factor here now, so they're going to have to do something. Second down at about three. Pistano wants to throw. Needs some scrambling room. Now he's going to run it out of there. What a good tackle by Sean Young. Right at the midfield mark, a flag goes down on the play. And let's see what the call is. Maybe coming up against LaSalle Peru. What a good hit by Sean Young, though, and a good open field tackle. It's going to be a clip against Camilo Valley. Let's watch uh, 43. Well, he takes... There's where it is. All right, there's uh, Pistano still running. There's Valley coming in from behind right there. Valley the fullback coming in from behind and making contact. The man who was clipped was Dave first in the big defensive end. That happens when you've got a scramble type situation, Mike, and people changing directions and so on. It uh, will occasionally occur. Hit yes. him above the waist, but from behind. As an offensive man, you just have to be so careful to get that head and shoulders in front of the man. And as you uh, point out, it's hard to do sometimes because of the uh, the movement that come around. That was just you know, desire and effort on the part of Valley, but it cost him 15 yards. Second down, 18 yards to go. The pitch to Pete Bray. Needs to turn the corner, does, to the 40. Bray down to the 44-yard line. Coming up on the stop, Mark Eisenhardt, number 20, making the tackle. Okay, Pete Bray on the run this time. Great blocking out here. Let's watch the blocking right there. Stacking up about three defenders. He can't get out of bounds, though. Can't get out of bounds to stop the clock. They call for timeout to do it. 13 seconds to play. They want to talk it over on the sideline. 13 seconds to play first half with Wheaton North leading 7 to nothing. Look at the scoreboard. Third down and eight situation. The ball resting out around the 45-yard line. Joe Marini paces the sideline. Third time he's been here. He wants desperately to win a state 4A championship. He's had an outstanding record at LaSalle, Peru. And undefeated this year. Last time they were undefeated was 1968. Wheaton North knowing that Pistono probably is going to go to the air with 13 seconds to play. Campbell misses him. Now he's going to have to run it. And he's using up time and cannot get out of bounds and drops as we get on to four, three, two, one. And they try to stop it. Nope, they didn't get it stopped in time. So, time runs out here in the first half with Wheaton North leading seven to nothing. And the makings of a similar kind of ball game that we had last night in the 3A final between Morris and Mascuda. A seven to nothing lead right now for Wheaton North as they walk off. And again, we mentioned what a big factor the wind has played in the ball game so far in the punting game. Now, let's go to Tournament Central. Thank you, Bob. We'll have a summary for you on the first half very shortly, and that will be followed by a couple of special features we have planned for you. Our coverage from Hancock Stadium will continue after this. Good football game in this 4A championship. Wheaton North leading 7-0 over LaSalle, Peru. The difference, I think, uh, in a large degree has been the win playing havoc with the punting game. 
We saw Wheaton North have just as much difficulty punting into the win as did LaSalle Peru in the first period of play. LaSalle Peru had uh, a short punt in the first quarter toward the end of it, and Wheaton North had it deep in LaSalle Peru territory and took advantage of it. Though the end of the period came, they were down deep and wound up with a nine-yard run by Lewis Holland for the touchdown. Their point after try was good from placement, and they led 7 to nothing. On the other hand, their defense came to the shore as uh, Wheaton North had to punt. The ball was well deep in their territory. LaSalle Peru moved it down to the 15-yard line near first down territory, but only inches shy, and they stopped LaSalle Peru around the 15. And that made a big difference as LaSalle Peru was not able to take advantage of a short punt off the foot of the uh, Wheaton punter, Brad Campbell. So in the second half, it's going to be much the same. And who knows? It may indeed be uh, a punt or a kickoff or something of that nature that uh, would have to battle this wind out here as the wind blows toward the north. That could give one club or the other the slight advantage and who knows an ultimate win. That's it for the summary for right now. We'll have some videotape highlights of outstanding plays for you a little later on in the halftime intermission. And our coverage of the Illinois High School Association football championships will continue after this. We're back in Tournament Central at the top of Hancock Stadium here in Normal, Illinois. And now it's time for a VIP interview with a special guest. Here's Bob Starr. Here at halftime, we're going to talk it over with Liz Astroth, who's the executive secretary of the Illinois High School Association. First of all, Liz, thanks for coming by and take some time out of a busy schedule. I know it's a tough time of the year when you run uh, five games in two days, but I think we'd have to say in all honesty, yesterday went like a breeze and capped off by a super football game last night in the final 3A game. Yes, this is probably one of the finest 3A games we've had in the history of the playoffs. The uh, other activities coming up, and I know there's much talk all over the state, and you're very involved in it, and the possibility of having to expand and go to uh, a sixth classification, which would be a 6A. I think that's correct, Bob. I just came from a meeting this morning with the Football Coaches Association and the, and the member football coaches, and we were evaluating our present program, what has uh, transpired in the past six years. When we inaugurated the program, we had 65 football conferences in the state of Illinois, and that dictated that we have five 16-team brackets under our present format. With the 65 schools <coughs> winning in the conferences allocated to the five brackets, that meant 13 teams were in each bracket. And then we could take care of what we call the non-affiliated schools with conferences, or independents, and they were called at-large teams. Well, the recognition and the enthusiasm that has been generated by the playoffs has caused schools to want to qualify by being a conference champion. And mm -hmm. we now have presently have 75 conferences, which is limiting the number of opportunities for the at-large teams. So we're considering now, and we understand because of this, that more schools are going to form conferences, and then we'll be beyond 80, which will negate the independent team. So we'll have to consider possibly six classes. Because of the energy crisis, which affects everybody, not only in sports, but in all phases of business, is there the possibility, because of this sort of thing, that you would have to have separate sites throughout the state that would be somewhat more convenient, I suppose, for playoffs, rather than everything coming to one central spot like we have here at Normal? Yes, because of the energy crisis, and, but until we get a definitive statement on what we should do in, in our state office, we are exploring the possibilities of that exists for us. And one of them would be, of course, to change the format, the structure, and follow it all the way through to the final games, which means we play the preliminary game at the site of one of the competing schools, the quarterfinal games at the site of one of the competing schools, and the semifinal mm -hmm. games at one of the competing schools. Now, the next step would be if that minimizes travel and will save energy, I think that we'd have to consider playing the championship games at the side of one of the competing schools. And there's also another danger with all of the programs you have. I think uh, you gave me a note you have something like 23 athletic tournaments for boys and girls of secondary schools. And uh, this presents a problem, I guess, because there is that danger, I would assume, of perhaps having to delete a program or two. Yes, that's one of the problems. And uh, with this year, we went from 23 to 24 state championships. But our board has adopted a policy and whether it's a good one or not remains to be seen. But it, it had energy as a background and cost and inflation to the schools as a, as a basis also. They adopted a policy that said that for a school, uh, for us to inaugurate, inaugurate a state tournament series, 
at least 20, uh, 15 percent of the schools must have that sport in competition. So we will not be adding from this time on any more new tournaments. Also, on the contrary side, they said if 10 percent of our schools do not have a, a program in a particular sport, then that program will be deleted. Liz, we thank you for the visit. Thanks for coming by and taking time out of the busy schedule at this time of the year. Well, we thank you for our coverage and thank you for having us. Liz Astroff, the Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association, our guest. Now back to Tournament Central. Thank you, Bob. High school marching bands add a great deal to the thrill of seeing the games here in Normal. One of the bands has moved out onto the field and we're going to switch down there for coverage right after this. We're at halftime in the Class 4A championship game, and we're going to switch down to the field to watch one of the marching bands. On the field right now is the LaSalle Township Marching Cavaliers Band. It's 116 members strong. The director is Mel Pontius, assistant director Tom Swain. The drum major is Karen Lusk, assistant drum major Gary Mueller and the color guard commander, Jane Spark. And of course, we've had an awful lot of pageantry here at all the championship games this weekend. As you can see, a 116-member band on the field right now going through their formations. The Wheaton North Marching Band was on before. They're 74 members strong with their director, Gil Lehman, and assistant director, Dan Fridley. They've already performed. Let's, uh, let's go down to the field and listen to that LaSalle Township Marching Cavaliers Band. the event that you just joined us, we're between halves in the Class 4A Illinois High School Association Football Championship Playoff. Our coverage from Hancock Stadium in Normal, Illinois will continue after this. As you see down on the field, the LaSalle Peru Band is still performing. What a magnificent sight they've been. While we are waiting for the second half kickoff, we can take a look at some of the statistics on the game thus far. In the first half, the score stands Wheaton North 7, LaSalle Peru nothing. In the first down department, Wheaton North had a total of four. LaSalle Peru had three. Rushing, Wheaton North had 91 yards that they ground out in a very, very hard effort. And LaSalle Peru came up with a total of 71. In passing, a minus three yards for Wheaton North, no yards passing for LaSalle Peru. 
So you can see the battle has been very strong on the ground here. In total yardage, Wheaton North had a total of 88, LaSalle Peru, 71. In passes, Wheaton North attempted three, completed one. LaSalle Peru attempted two, completed none. And punts, four for 30 yards average for Wheaton North, four for 27 yard average for LaSalle Peru. And the penalty, just 20 yards for Wheaton North and 30 yards for LaSalle Peru. Here are some of the highlights of the first half brought to you by Videotape. Second down at about five, just inside the 10-yard line. As Wheaton North threatens to score, the pitch to Holland. To the five, and touchdown, number 25, Lewis Holland. LaSalle Peru needs a yard. Fourth down and a yard to go at the 11-yard line of Wheaton, or 15-yard, 16-yard line of Wheaton North. The fullback gets it. Let's see where the penetration goes. Did Wheaton North hold? They seem to indicate they did. Well, it certainly was an interesting first half. A lot of excitement, not a great deal of scoring. And as Bob Starr had told you earlier, the wind is certainly a factor here today. It's not a very cold day. It's 53 degrees, actually, by temperature. It's a beautiful day here, a sunshiny day, the best day that we've had since back in 1974 when this all started down here at Bloomington Normal. But the wind is blowing very strong out of the south, and it uh, is a very chilly wind, to say the least. And it's been a real factor. The team that has had to punt into that win has been averaging only 12 to 15 yards per punt, and it's given them poor field position. In the first quarter, uh, Wheaton North dominated as a result of that, finally winding up scoring with good uh, field position. They scored in the second quarter, and that has been the scoring. It turned around, and they were the ones with a bad field position, but they put on a valiant goal line stand just prior to the half there and uh, got a hold of the ball and were able to go into the dressing room with a seven to nothing lead. A uh, significant factor is that Jeff Ostrowski was injured early in the game and he's the all everything lineman for the LaSalle Peru ball club. And we don't know whether he'll be able to play during the second half or not. However, he won't be able to play. The word is just out. He's not gonna be able to play and that should make some difference, but. They have been playing very well at his position before. What are your observations here, Mike? Well, Floyd, uh, Jeff Ostrowski did dislocate his elbow, will be unable to play in the second half. And uh, to me, it's been Wheaton North's ability to control the football. They've been more consistent. Uh, LaSalle Peru has shown an ability to move the football, but they haven't been consistent. Their drives have not been, a they have not been able to carry through. They had that very critical fourth down situation from around the 20 yard line. They were unable to pick that up and that was when they were going with the win. Uh, then Wheaton North in the second quarter able to control the football. I, I don't know if it was a major portion of the time but for a good part of the time and not let LaSalle Peru get their hands on it which they needed to do when they have that win and it is still strong coming out of the south. Do you think without Ostrowski in there, he goes both ways on offense and defense. Without his blocking, that's been a factor to eliminate them, the ability to sustain a drive, Mike? Well, I'm, I'm sure it is because uh, when you have a player of Jeff Ostrowski's ability, the whole team rallies around him. He's a leader. You lose a man of that caliber, it, it's going to affect, I think, everybody on the team. These are some of the intangibles in the game of football, but... I, I think it does. It affects everyone on the team when they don't have a man of his stature in there. Now, obviously, LaSalle Peru is very much a right-handed team because what they've done, I believe, is move their regular left tackle over to right tackle. We'll double-check that. Bob Baker has moved over to right tackle uh, to play next to the other All-Stater, Mike Noblock. Uh, I do want to check that again, but it looks like they are a right-handed team. They want that power on the right side. Uh, I would guess that uh, Kevin Duchesne... Uh, or not Kevin Duchesne, but uh, Bill Duchesne has moved in at the left tackle position. But credit so, Dave Burston and Brad Campbell on the left side of that uh, very fine Wheaton North line over there. They've contained that motion going to the right. They have done a fine job. Oh, on yes, the left they side, have. They've done good, too, with Bob Reese and uh, Sean Young at the other side of the line. They're about ready to kick off, Mike. Here is George Cassip into the ball. 
Hits it well with the wind down to Rich McDonald. Holland had it first, and now McDonald takes it on a bounce. And is hit and hit hard. Coming down to make the first hit was Dale Piaja. And then following was Herb Reese, one of the linebackers. will stay in there. And so they'll mark it down around the 15-yard line from which Wheaton North will start this series of downs. A six-yard return on the kickoff, but now another chance for LaSalle Peru, if they can, to force Wheaton, Wheaton North to punt into this win. Because it'll be Wheaton North's football in the fourth quarter with the wind at their back. And a big, big quarter for LaSalle Peru. They've got them deep on the 15-yard line. They go with Holland and Sean Young in the backfield behind Charles Long, the quarterback. The fake and the give off to Holland going to the left side. He is hit and stopped. It was Mike Stashik, number 41, who made the initial contact with him. Gave him about three yards out to around the 18-yard line. It'll bring up second down at about seven to go for Wheaton North. They lead 7 to nothing. We're just into the second half of this 4A championship game. Joe Marini in eight years at LaSalle Peru has won 68, lost 21. He's turned on some good football players. Mark Seelan is the wingman on the left side, number 15. A flag goes down, and encroachment could be the call here. Someone lining up offside, perhaps. And that is it. Encroachment is the call against LaSalle Peru. Well, that changes the complexion of things now. It becomes second down and short rather than second down and long. It comes now second down and two yards to go. Ball resting out at the 23-yard line. Wheaton North scored in the early part of the uh, second quarter on a nine-yard gallop by Lewis Holland, number 25. They now have Young and Campbell in the backfield. Sealand is the wingback on the left. They give off to Campbell, the fullback. Pulls his way to the left side, trying to get it across the 25, out to around the 26, 27. Number 22 is Rich Serafini, who made the stop for LaSalle, Peru. Let's watch Reese, the middle linebacker. Two blockers on him. Not much of a chance on that. And Reese, uh, Reese, pretty good linebacker. They're going after the right guy. So the penalty hurt them. They picked up the first down. They had only two yards to go for the first down. Got a little better than that. Out across the 25. It is first down. Coming out wide to the right side is John Flaherty, number 82. Wingman on the left is Sealing. They give up to Sean Young. He is hit about the 28-yard line and driven down, maybe around the 27. Not too much. Picked up a yard, yard and a half. One of the pothoffs down there on the bottom. Bob Baker, number 72, on the bottom as well. They'll mark it down around the 28. Second down and about eight yards to go. Ball resting just outside the 27-yard line. Off to Sean Young on the slant. Pretty much straight power football, Mike. They're not uh, doing anything of an unusual nature. Number 77 was Dennis Potoff on the tackle for LaSalle, Peru. But there's nothing uh, very striking about either team as far as doing anything razzle-dazzle. Just well, straight, good, sound, fundamental football. Both of these teams are run-oriented teams. They've gotten into the final by running the football. Wheaton North averaged 23.6 points a game and uh, doing it mostly on the ground. Third down and five from their 31. The give to Sean Young. Hit there by Randy Freshy, number 32. He finally comes out rolling out on top over them. Freshy helped out on the stop on the tackle coming up with Mike Stashik, number 41. They are short of a first down. It'll bring up fourth down and about a yard to go, slightly less than a yard, just shy of their own 35-yard line. Bob, the total passing yardage in the first half, both teams was a minus three yards. LaSalle Peru had no completions, and uh, Wheaton North had one for a minus three. Wheaton North, with the confidence in their running game, they're going to go for it on fourth and one, near their own 35, with a full house in the backfield. Charles Long, the quarterback, gives to Sean Young, and they get the first down. Straight pop, quick hitter, across the 35 to about the 37-yard line. And they pick up the first down. I wondered how soon somebody would start to get around that because you can't gain anything kicking. You might as well gamble. I'm sure that'll be a factor as the game progresses. Joe Pearson, number 68, making the tackle for LaSalle, Peru. But it's a first down for Wheaton North on their own 37. I was surprised at the defensive lineup on that uh, fourth and one. They stayed in their 4-4 defense with the big gaps. Uh, awfully easy. If they'd run a quarterback sneak, there was a big hole there for a quarterback sneak. 
very surprised at the uh, lineup on that defense. They go with the slot. They fake the give inside. Holland fumbles, picks it up, giving ground, and finally Serafini wraps him up back at around the 25-yard line. Number 22, Rich Serafini, coming in to make the stop as Holland fumbled the handoff. Let's watch the fumbled handoff. Just didn't get back far enough to give the ball to Holland. Now he tries to come back, and Serafini drives him deep and makes the tackle. 12-yard loss on the play. Back to the 25-yard line. Second down, 22 yards to go now. They'll go out of the eye with Campbell, number 40, and number 42, Sean Young, behind Charles Long. Gives to Young. Gets to the 26 and no more. Both these clubs, good, sound defensive football teams. Mike, you see them converge. They get some people in on the tackle. It's not a one-man job. They get a bunch of people, a hitter, and then stack him up. The man that particular time making the first at Mike Noblock and then getting a lot of help. Second. What? What a critical play this is. Third and 21, you would think they'd want to put it up, but into that stiff breeze, nobody would have that much courage, I don't think. I don't think they will take a chance to throw the football against the wind. Charles Long is 6'3", 170, so he's going to see over the defense in pretty good shape. They split their receivers out. Andy's to the right side, and Long he's throwing. rolling. Being hit and being dropped on the sack. Coming hard, number 68, Joe Pearson. 5'10", 220. And he literally horse-collared him and threw him down. The pass rush was the difference on this play. He didn't really have much time at all. Well, he came up from a linebacker spot. He was going all the way for him. Joe Pearson, a 5'10", 220-pound lineman on that sack. So now Campbell, Brad Campbell, number 40, boarding, punting into this win. Number 32 is Randy Freshy in the safety spot. End over end and short, as you would expect. Gets the wheat and roll. They'll mark it around the 43-yard line, near the 44. And that is where it is blown dead, a 27-yard punt. You Very can't good. ask for much more than that against oh. that win. Very he, good. He did a good job that time. Tried to keep the ball low. He kept the ball low and got the uh, bounce. So there's a timeout on the field now with the score remaining. Wheaton North 7, LaSalle Peru nothing. And our coverage of the state high school football championship will continue after this. There you see Jeff Ostrowski, the young all-state tackle, big guy, 6'3", 250, and he's out of this ball game with a dislocated elbow and having to watch from the sidelines. This is Pete Bray, the fine tailback for LaSalle Peru, coming up the middle. On the stop, Tom Spikalski, number 62. Gets off the pile. They'll get it down to around the 40-yard line. A gain of about three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Pete Bray just going straight ahead. Let's see if LaSalle Peru can't generate some offense with their larger offensive line. Uh, too low. Intended out there for number 41. Mike Stashik, he's six feet, 168 pounds, but delivered right at his shoe tops, really had no chance to make the reception. So now that brings up third down on about seven. Jim Pistono at the 41-yard line of Wheaton North, trying to generate some offense for LaSalle, Peru. Five minutes and 25 seconds to play in this third quarter. Pistono, as you look at him, is 6'3", 180. Has to put it up again. And this one complete down to around the 34-yard line near first down territory. I'm not sure that they got it. On the catch was uh, Mike Bassador, the tight end, 6'183". I think he did. There's the, there's the pass. I think you're right, Mike. He there's good execution there. And it was a seven-yard pass. And they're going to measure. Now, no, there's a ball edging up at around the 33-yard line. Uh, Mike, Mike Landreth all over his back there, but he had position. That was a well-executed play. So the ball resting at the 33-yard line of Wheaton North as LaSalle Peru tries to sustain this drive. They'll go with their power eye. Double tight end set on a first and ten. The fullback gets the call. Not much running room at all. Coming up was Camilo Valley, and he got maybe a yard falling to around the 32, but not much more than that. Called Mark. Landreth, I called him Mike. He's a Mark. The two linebackers on that Wheaton North team, Rich Dakniak and Steve Herta, both 160-pounders. 
but uh, they haven't let the difference in size bother them too much. They really have held them off pretty well. Salfrew picked up less than a yard. Second down still. Better than nine to go to the fullback. Nope, second man this time, Pete Bray. And Bray gets a little more running room. Across the 35, around the 33-yard line before he is stacked up. Sean Young, number 42, in on the stop. There's Pete Bray. Second man through. Blocking help from uh, Valley. But the pursuit has been tremendous. There's Pete Bray. On the stop also was Mark Eisenhart, number 20, coming up from the safety spot in the secondary for Wheaton North. Third down, still about five yards to go. The Stono intended for his tight end. He was there. Darren Delaney just couldn't hang on to it, just off his fingertips at around the 20. Tough break there for the LaSalle Peru team. The Stono, good, good play action fake, going from a full T formation. Good throw to Delaney. Delaney cannot hang on to it, right on his fingertips. Okay, here's, here's Stockniak following the tight end, Delaney. Delaney's got a lead on him. Can't hang on to the football. Destono on the screen out to Bray, and at the 25 for the 20-yard line goes Bray. What a good job he did. He was hit behind the line. Finally, Stockniak, number 70, wrapped him up at the 20. But big. Pete Bray did a good job of shaking the first tackler and picking up the first down. Big, big play for the Cavaliers. Fourth down and five. Going for it. And Sean Young, number 42, the fine running back for Wheaton North, is down on the plate around the 28-yard line. Out of your picture there, and they're looking over him. And that would be a blow to the running attack of Wheaton North if he could not continue to function, much less his defensive work, which has been very good here today. While we have a little time here, I'll tell you how you can uh, thank the folks, the sponsors who are happy to bring you these championship football games on television, and they'd like to hear from you about the coverage and your thoughts and comments. All you have to do is write to football, box 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. That's football, box 95, Chicago, Illinois, 60690. They don't dare let Mike or me or Floyd Brown read the mail. <laughs> It is first down at the 20, and they give to the big fullback, Camilo Valley, and he is inside the 10 and down to about the 8-yard line, dragging tacklers, and finally dragging him down was number 24, Mike Landreth. Here's Camilo Valley going from a full T offense, hard running. He was smelling pay dirt, and that was an 11-yard gain, bringing that football down to the 8-yard line, first and goal to go. They'll go with the straight tee again. Straight power football. Valley gets some more inside the five to maybe the four-yard line, leaving tacklers with him. Leading the charge, number 62, Tom Spikulski. Here it is again, straight ahead. Look at the offensive line blocking. Well, this is where Wheaton North has been their toughest when they've had their backs to the wall. It'll be interesting to see what happens at this time. They've passed a couple of times, so we can't outlaw that. Second down and goal at the five. Wheaton North trying to get in. They give to Pete Bray, and he is down to near the two-yard line. They fake to the fullback. Bray took it, number 42. Coming up was Landreth, number 24. Number 42, Sean Young, who stayed in there on the stop as well. And it is now third down and goal to go, and it's at the one-yard line of Wheaton North. I'll tell you the truth. I enjoy watching this football, Bob. Just good old T-formation football. Run at him. Cross bucks, second man through, and they're going after it. Third down and goal to go. They give to Valley, trying to wedge it in. And he and got he there. Got Touchdown. I tell you, he didn't get there by much, but he kept driving forward and just broke the play into the goal line. And we're a point after away from tying it up for the two-point extra point away for LaSalle Peru to go ahead. Let's watch the touchdown play driving in for that TD. Let's see it. Behind this time, the fullback. Camilo Valley, oh, not much running room. He just drove it in. They're going to go for the two-point play. It is seven to six. Wheaton North by a point. LaSalle Peru trying to take the lead. Quick pop inside to Valley, wedging it out. They don't get it. Oh, Wheaton boy. North held him out of there. 
So it is still Wheaton North on top in this 4A championship game by a point with 2.22 to play in the third quarter. There's a timeout on the field with the score Wheaton North 7, LaSalle Peru 6. And our coverage of the state high school football championship will continue after this. George Cassip to kick off for LaSalle Peru, number 55, with his hand in the air. McDonald back in the middle to return. Rich McDonald coming to him at the 7. He's up to the 20. 25. And he's at the 40. At the 50. To the 41-yard line. A good return by Rich McDonald. And I believe it was George Cassip, the kicker, who finally had to bring him down. Let's take a look at it again. Let's watch Rich McDonald. Gets that on the seven-yard line. Comes up behind his blocking. He's got a lot of speed. You can see that. Good blocks right there. Following the blocking well. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one. And there, there comes George Cassip. Caught, caught from behind by the kicker. It was a 53-yard return. And a penalty tacked on at the point of the tackle that will move it down to the 25-yard line. In LaSalle Peru territory, and that really hurts. And apparently a late hit. Personal foul. Let's see, there it is. There it is right there. Well, that really I, hurts. You just got I'll into the end what. zone, and then your special team kind of lets you down a little bit. Pretty pretty tough to stop when you're going like that. This means, uh, particularly if they score here, they could conceivably have the lead and have the wind in the fourth quarter. And there's a the LaSalle top. Peru player down on the field, back around the 30-yard line. We can't see a number. I have no idea who it might be that was injured on the kickoff. Coverage team. George Cassip did make the stop, the kicker. And coming up is that Herb Reese, number 30? Or is it number 80? Let's see I if we got a full number. I believe it's Herb Reese. It is. Herb Reese was their fine linebacker and one of the defensive leaders for LaSalle Peru. So they've lost Jeff Ostrowski, lost him all the way back in the first quarter. And now, Jeff Reese being helped off. We don't know for sure whether he'll be able to return. He's going to try to trot out of there. They're going to work it out, run it out, see if he can get back in. He's a leading tackler on the LaSalle Peru defense. Gutsy football player. By the way, LaSalle Peru's touchdown drive covered 44 yards in 11 plays. So you know the kind of drive it was, and they ate up almost four minutes on the clock in covering those 44 yards. Waiting north now with a chance to get in there at the 25, first down. On the counter, they give back to the left side. Andy Helmick on the carry down to about the 22, 23 yard line before he was stopped. Coming up on the tackle, number 62, Mike Noblock. Got to help out of the secondary. Coming up was Randy Freshy, number 32. They'll mark it around the 22, gain of about three. Second down and seven at the LaSalle Peru 22. Big 53 yard kickoff return by Rich McDonald with a 15 yard penalty tacked on after that. Sealand of the wingman to the right side. Mark Sealand into Sean Young. Quick pop right up the middle inside the 20 to around the 18-yard line. Linebackers diving in to try to track it down. Number 61 was Bob Manley and number 68, Brian, uh, or I should say Joe Pearson. Let's see that play with Sean Young from the defensive. Now you're seeing what the defensive players see. Hmm. A whole lot of men there, too. <laughs> the man who led the charge to jam it up was Dennis Potoff. Number 77. It is third down and three at the 18. And Deshaun and Young, and he may go. It is touchdown for Wheaton North from 18 yards out for Sean Young. He got an opening. It looked like the secondary was just frozen, Mike. They couldn't react. Boy, did he ever. He breaks through so clean, so fast. It's that what you would call a misdirection play, the flow going the other way. And no one touches him. He got a great block from the center, Keith Cote, and uh, Stashniak on the other side who opened that up for him. Boy, you should have seen that center there, Mike. Mm. <laughs> you mean I missed it? <laughs> you mean you missed it? Oh, did he throw a good block for him. He took out the middle linebacker. They're going to try for the point after. It is good. Adding it. 
Number 60, Tom Hessling, who does the place kicking for Wheaton North, and they're on top 14-6 now. A 25-yard drive after a 53-yard kickoff return and a 15-yard roughing penalty tacked onto that. And then from 18 yards out, Sean Young, who has run well here today, went in for the score. Let's watch that touchdown play again. There's the center's block. And Young running behind it. And no one near him. Let's, let's watch this kicker. Well, just 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 another yeah, day's work. That's He's right. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it. No excitement there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it. Great extension on his leg, too. Well, he's kicking against that wind. It's not that easy, even uh, when you're only kicking that extra point. That particular drive covered 25 yards after that great kickoff return in only three plays. 25-yard drive set up by an outstanding kickoff return by Rich McDonald of Wheaton North of 53 yards. So now LaSalle, Peru has to come back. Marvin Carter hits it wobbly toward the side. It may go out of bounds. It is out of bounds. Out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. Well, in so that is where school, LaSalle, Peru will put it in play. Well, in high school football, they bring it back to the 40-yard line. They kick out of bounds. It comes back automatically to the 40-yard line instead of kicking over again. And you punish the kicking team for not kicking it well. Right. So doing. Of course, they didn't kick it much past the 40 anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to do today. <laughs> LaSalle Peru back in that straight tee. The power football off to the fullback, Valley. And look at him drive for the 45 to the 46-yard line and finally ridden down. Well, if LaSalle Peru is going to throw another pass in this game, they ought to do it right now because they've got 38 seconds left. Here's Valley. Same thing straight ahead. Tough. Good. There he is, Camilo Valley. He is 5'11", 198. Second down at about four, their own 46. Pete Bray finally wrapped up by number 72, dragged him down. Dave Burst in the big defensive left end. With some help, out to help out on the play as well was Rich Stackniak, the linebacker. Gain of only about a yard. Third down, still two on their own 47 yard line. The yards have been tough to come by. The Wheaton North defense has been strong. You see the Time countdown as the quarter has ended. The end of the third quarter, the score now. Wheaton North 14, LaSalle Peru 6. And our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue after this. Third down and two for LaSalle Peru at their own 48-yard line. Trailing in this one by eight. We go with the straight T. To the second man, Bray, and he is in for the first down to about the 49 of Wheaton North. Ran the first guy through, and then he sneaked through, taking the handoff as the second man, and coming up on the stop to make the tackle was Mike Landreth. Coming up from the secondary, number 24, at his first down, just into Wheaton North territory for LaSalle Peru. We're in the fourth and final period. One of the L LaSalle Peru fans with an LP on his helmet. They are numerous out here. Good crowd on hand for this 4A championship game. He wants to run it. And let's see if he can. To the 40. Oh. He got by Sean Young. Young came up to get a piece of him. Could not. And finally was tracked down from behind by number 62, Tom Pyskul Py Spikulski. Jim Pistano going back to throw against that wind. She's a big opening. Here he goes. Let's watch Sean Young, number 42, take a shot at him. Stops, hey, gets by him, but not for long. There's Jim Pistono, the LaSalle Peru quarterback. 6'3, 180 pounds, picked up nine. It is second down and one at the 40 yard line of Wheaton North. So LaSalle Peru is not about to pack up and go home. So they're down by eight. Pistono needs some room. Uh oh, he's going to be hit and sacked this time and Whoa. loses about six yards. Ooh, that, that hurts. Stuff. Brad Campbell, number 40, made the tackle on it. That hurts when it's third and one. There's Pistono looking for some room. Gets hit right there. So now instead of having a first down, perhaps, yeah. 
They are wind up with a third down and about seven, losing I, six yards on I the play. I said he had third and one. He had second and one, which is a good play to throw that ball because you figure you've got that third down if you don't complete it to come back. But the sack is, well, that's awfully hard on you. They Quick screen it. The fullback, Camilo Valley, had really no chance to get anything done. They covered it in good shape. John Andes is number 28 getting off the pile. There's Burston, big number 72, the Just defensive left end. Just a quick screen, but the Wheaton North defense read that screen all the way. You see three or four men out there. They read the screen all the way. Burston being the key man. Now they lost about four more yards on that play, and it's back to the 49-yard line and a punting situation. Pete Bray has to get it out of there. Rich McDonald back in single safety. Kicking into the wind is Pete Bray. Line of scrimmage right near midfield. Good spiral, but hangs up in the wind, and it's going to drop short. Covered there well by LaSalle, Peru. Wheaton North takes over on their own 36-yard line. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Wheaton North 14, LaSalle, Peru 6, and our coverage of the State High School Football Championships will continue after this. First down coming up for Wheaton North on their own 36-yard line, holding an eight-point edge in this 4A championship game. 14-6 over LaSalle, Peru. Nine minutes, 22 seconds to play. Charles Long brings them out. He's the quarterback. Straight dive play. Off there to Sean Young. Got it out to around the 38-yard line, but not much farther than that. Dennis Potoff, number 77, leading the charge for the defensive line. Pick up of about three. They'll mark it at the 39. Second down and about seven yards to go at their own 39-yard line. And not only does Wheaton North have the lead, they have the wind at their back. They'll go with a little straight T operation as well. Double tight end set, full house in the backfield. Man in motion is Sean Young. They give here to Lewis Holland. Pretty good defensive play. Coming up from the secondary on the right side was Mike Stashik. Mike Pyle, he did a pretty good job of keeping that thing contained inside and getting in on the tackle as well. I'm trying to see if Herb Reese has come back into the football game. Their leading tackler and linebacker, I believe he's still down on the sideline. I thought he was going to be able to come back. We had a report that he injured his knee, should be able to return, but he hasn't come back yet. So now it is third down and four from their own 42-yard line for Wheaton North. Long looking to throw, may run, he will. Has the first down and more down to the 47-yard line in LaSalle, Peru territory and picks up the first down on the scramble. Looks like he really had no intention of throwing that thing at all as it turned out. Number 72 makes the tackle, it is Bob Baker. There he is, Charles Long hiding that football again. Watch this move he puts on Weber here. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> and he right past him, he went. Good move. Yeah. First down pickup. Wheaton folks on the far side sitting in the sunlight here at Hancock Stadium at Illinois State University. First down at the 47 of LaSalle, Peru. To the fullback, Brad Campbell, into the middle at the 45, maybe to the 44 as they wedge it out up front. But they consume that time. That run, by the way, by Charles Long earlier was for 11 yards. Dennis Potoff, number 77, on the bottom of the pile, leading the charge on the tackle. Getting help out of number 68, Joe Pearson. Gain of about three, maybe four yards. We'll call it three. Second down and seven. The ball at the 44-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. The Wheaton North Falcons coming in with an 11-1 record, trying to win a 4A championship and holding on to an eight-point edge at the moment to Sean Young. Into the middle. A couple of more to about the 42-yard line. Again, pot off underneath. Number 77 is where you'll generally find him as he jams it up from underneath. There's number 30, Herb Reese, sitting on the bench, wishing he could get back in that football game. Incidentally, Sean Young has been the workhorse for Wheaton North this afternoon, and through three quarters, he carried the ball 17 times for 69 yards and one touchdown. Third down, five yards to go at the LaSalle, Peru, 42-yard line. The fake and the keep by Long at the 40 to the 38. 
near the 38. Let's see where they mark it. An all-important mark coming up here. Freshie up on the stop from the secondary, number 32, number 41, standing out there is Mike Stashik. And it'll be fourth down and about a yard to go. The ball right around the 38-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. And Charles Long leaning into that Wheaton North huddle, showing no signs of kicking it away. They will go for it on fourth down, fourth and one. Go with the full house in the backfield. Sean Young is the ball carrier, scrambles for the first down to the 35, maybe the 34-yard line. Tripped up as he came inside, but nobody really landing on him. They got arms on him, but that was about it. He got about four yards on it. Good power straight ahead running, isn't it? He is a hard runner. Not terribly large as running backs go. 5'10", 175 pounds. Very nifty. He's turned in some fine broken field running here this afternoon as well. First down at the South Peru 35. Brad Campbell, the fullback, carries into the middle for a couple of more to around the 33, maybe the 32-yard line. Number 77, pot off. Number 51, Rich Weber. Both combining on the stop at the 32-yard line. Second down and about seven. Let's pause now. Five seconds for station identification. WGN Television, Chicago. They go with their slot off to the right side. A second down and seven situation. Off to Brad Campbell on the pitch, and the fullback gets inside the 30, wedging it out to around the 26, 27 yard line. First man to get a piece of him was number 52, and that was Dwayne Potoff, who got an arm on him, and then up from the secondary, number 41, to get on the play was Mike Stashik. Third down and about a yard to go at the 26 yard line of LaSalle, Peru. Wheaton North on the drive, consuming time as they are. Four minutes and ten seconds to play in this ball game. And it has all been on the ground here as they've just wedged it out, Mike. Good straight ahead football. They can pick up the first down inside the 25 to about the 24, maybe the 23 yard line, even. The carrier, Mike Eisenhart, number 20. They mark it at the 23 yard line, and it's another first down. Weed North has been very impressive. They've shown a, a great ability to mix up that running game and also to make the yardage they need. It's just good power football against a much larger LaSalle Peru football team. They send Andes out to the right side. They put Mark Seelan, number 15, on that right wing in the slot. The pitch to Brad Campbell, the fullback inside the 20 and dragging people down to about the 15, Stashik, number 41, on the stop is Brad Campbell, running from the fullback spot. He is replacing Marvin Carter in the fullback slot. They're running really with their, uh, well, I don't think you'd call them number two, but certainly the fellows are not listed as starters in the backfield. And no, and Brad Campbell doesn't get in that category of being smaller. He's a six foot one, 200 pounder. He's a pretty good sized fullback. I have a flag down there. They're talking it over with LaSalle Peru, so they may have. Had a call here to nullify the game. 49-yard drive to this point. Drive started on the Wheaton 36. I think we're going to have a holding penalty against Wheaton North. And that will move it back to the 34-yard line. First down and about 21 to go now for Wheaton North at the 34 of LaSalle, Peru. And he's again to the right side, sealing on that right wing. The tight end on the left side is John Flaherty, number 82, as they go to the eye. First down call at the 34-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. They give to Sean Young, hit by Potoff, number 77. That is Dennis Potoff. Got about three yards to the 31-yard line. The way they're chewing up this clock, they could easily, even if they don't score, have it down under two minutes before they give up the football. They're doing a fine job. Boy, it's now 3.03 to play. They have a second down and 18, and they have showed no signs of relinquishing the football. Well, we have a timeout on the field with the score. Wheaton North 14, LaSalle Peru 6. And our coverage of the State High School Football Championship will continue after this.
Some of the fans enjoying a cool breeze here at Illinois State University for this 4A championship game from LaSalle, Peru. Right now, Wheaton North on the move. They're leading 14-6, 3-0-3 to play in the ball game. A second down, an 18 at the 31-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. And Charles Long pumps and fires for the end zone. Tipped up and no good. And he's almost made a spectacular grab after it was batted away from him. He almost came down with again. Scott quit, I believe, number 31, back in the secondary on the coverage there. But number 28, John Andes for Wheaton North, almost came up with a spectacular grab. Scott quit has a good chance for an interception here. Pops that ball up in the air. Good long throw by Long. There's an infraction at the line of scrimmage. It's called against the offense. Might be holding. They talk it over with the defense on the field for LaSalle, Peru. And we'll see what the call is. Earlier 15-yard penalty here in this series cost Wheaton. It is a holding call against Wheaton North. It is declined. They'll take the down instead. The incomplete pass makes it third down and 18 at the 31 of LaSalle, Peru. This gives us an opportunity, Bob, to give the homecoming plans for Wheaton North High School leading this football game 14-6. to They'll depart after the 5A game tonight and take I-55 to 59 to Roosevelt Road to County Farm Road to Geneva Road to the high school. That's about approximately two and a half hours. They'll get home by one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> On the quick pop to Sean Young, driving straight ahead on the dive inside the 30 to around the 28-yard line, a gain of about three. Then a spot off number 77, number 51, Rich Weber on the stop for LaSalle, Peru. It's at about the 28-yard line, fourth down, and still 15 yards to go for the first down. Boy. And here comes Marvin Carter, number 44, and we may see a field goal attempt with this strong breeze, Mike and Floyd. Well, I wondered if they were going to make an attempt on, uh, on a field goal with the wind and uh, didn't know if Marvin Carter, who's been injured, was going to kick, or Mr. Cool, who kicks the extra points, uh, Tom Hessling. Well, they have a timeout on the field with the score. Wheaton North 14, LaSalle Peru 6, and our coverage of the state high school football championships will continue after this. For some people, getting where they're going isn't the important thing. It's how they get there that matters. It's for this person that we designed the John Deere Sport Fire. Up close, it promises performance. And out on the trail, it delivers. So even before you get where you're going, they'll know you've arrived. The Sport Fire, one of the new breed of deer. Berman's, the leather experts, brings you the biggest warehouse leather sale ever to hit Chicago. Right now, at the old turnstile building in Niles, you'll find over 15,000 discount priced men's and women's leather coats and jackets. Like this suede and Sherpa jacket for only $59.99. Or this smooth leather jacket for only $79.99. Or this leather zip out for just $119. Save now for a limited time only. Shop daily from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. At the old turnstile building across from Four Flag Center on Golf Road in Niles. Don't miss Berman's great warehouse leather sale. Two minutes and 28 seconds showing on the scoreboard clock here at Illinois State on a breezy day. The fans trying to stay as warm as possible. And a long field goal attempt coming up perhaps or not. Nope, they've changed their mind and they will go on fourth down and 15 and they will go from scrimmage. They had Marvin Carter out there. A rush from a record book. The longest had been 33 yards by Scott Craig prior to today. They fake, Long keeps it, has a lead block from Young, gets it. And they're down inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. Joe Pearson, number 68, made the tackle on Charles Long, who misses picking up the first down yardage. Long does a nice job following Sean Young, his workhorse running back. Really makes a nice game, gives a, a pretty good effort at picking up that first down. Brought down finally by Joe Pearson, 220-pounder. So now LaSalle Peru takes over with two minutes and 15 seconds showing and counting down in this fourth quarter. They're down by eight. They have to throw it and they can't do it. Incomplete off the fingertips of Darren Delaney. Pistono in a position now where he really has to put it up. They have second down and 10 from their own 18. The clock stopped with 2.03 to play. As you see, some of the fans from across the way still bathed in sunshine here at Hancock Stadium in Normal. 
Floyd was chuckling when I said uh, Wheat North was driving home at 1 o'clock in the morning. Don't you think anybody there to meet him? I bet the whole lot of that town will be out there to meet him. Oh, yeah, they'll be out in mass. Pistono back to throw again. Complete. Delaney has it this time and out to about the 28-yard line. That is going to be close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. Darren Delaney. Pistono throwing that football pretty well against that wind, which he has to do now if they're going to get a score. There's the catch by Delaney. What? Mike, this is almost the kind of pass they have to throw, too. Nothing of any long distance. That's right. Has to just keep it down and throw it. Now, Delaney, of course, if he thinks he could have broken him. that tackle. The ball kind of got away from him on the end, and he was scared they were going to call it. He jumped up, and he was delighted that they gave him the reception. Mike Eisenhardt, number 20, was on the tackle. It's first down at the 28-yard line of LaSalle, Peru. Pistono throwing again. Up to the outside, and incomplete. That one intended again for Delaney. On the coverage, number 11, Andy Helmick, 5'11", 170-pounder from Wheaton North. There's the clock, a minute and 45 to play. Now, that's the kind of pass that he can't throw across the field with that wind coming across. There's no way he can control that football throwing across the way. He's got to throw it straight ahead up the field. Scott Quitt, KWIT, number 31, checks in for LaSalle, Peru, and comes out as a flanker to the right side. Second down and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Makes the give inside, and Burston, number 72, the big defensive end crashing all the way, charging and rushing the passer, sacks him back at around the 21-yard line, a loss of about seven yards on the play. Let's see Burston beat the blocker. There he is. Bob Baker can't stay in front of him. And no question, there he is, All-State Dave Burston. So now it becomes third down and 17, all the way back at their own 21-yard line for LaSalle, Peru, with 125 showing on the scoreboard clock. And we've got some time out there in the field. Let me finish these homecoming plans. Uh, the, the, big, uh, the big time will be tomorrow afternoon in Wheaton, where at 2 p.m. an assembly will be held at the high school. The school officials will present the awards, and the mayor of Wheaton will be at the high school as well. For LaSalle, Peru, they have homecoming plans as well. At 5.30 today, a parade will start in Oglesby, uh, where the team bus will be met, and a police and fire truck escort will take them to the high school. And at 6.30, a reception for the team at the high school will be held. Mayors of LaSalle and Peru will be there to welcome them and uh, give them their medals and awards. Jim Pistono has been to the sideline to talk it over with Joe Marini and his coaching staff. Trailing by eight. It is 14-6. Wheaton North. It's been a good ball game. The wind has been a factor, no doubt about it. And it expected the play of both teams here. They fake the draws. Pistono's being rushed and gets free of that. But he is giving a lot of ground, needs some more help, and he will not get out of the next one. Number 70, hit him first, Rick. Rich Stakniak, and then the big number 72 coming on, Dave Burston. And they drop him all the way back at around the six-yard line. Well, let's watch uh, Pistono run for his life here. Rushed out of the pocket by Burston again. Here he is to the right, decides to come back, losing ground all the time, but he can't get away. Too much speed on that Wheaton North defense. And there's the man that made the tackle, number 70, Rich Stachniak, the great linebacker, 160-pound linebacker, team leader. You know, you've said something that reminded me. Number 72, Bob Baker, who's been playing in the game, uh, is the mayor of, uh, the son of the mayor of Peru. And he's played a fine game there, too, taking Ostrowski's place after he was hurt. Oh, yes, he is. He's the regular left tackle, moved over to right tackle, and Baker, who is not a starter on defense, has taken Ostrowski's... Uh, place on defense so he's had a had a big afternoon and uh, done a very creditable job taking the place of the big guy the all-stater Jeff Ostrowski who was injured early in the ball game with a dislocated elbow and a tough break for LaSalle Peru <laughs> these fellows are waiting for Floyd Brown to leave town ladies and gentlemen waiting for him to get on the highway Just... they, mi they missed me coming in this year so they want to get me going out <laughs> Well, Pistono with his back to the wall now. Fourth down and 32 from his own six or seven. 
has to go deep, and he has a man there, and it is intercepted. Picked off by number 24, Mike Landreth. Gets it all the way down to the sideline inside the 10 to around the 8-yard line, perhaps down in there. Hit hard by Joe Pearson. Also coming down, it appeared, was Mike Bassador on the stop. There's the guy who made the interception. Let's watch this play. Estono throwing the ball long, and he does underthrow it. He was really popped out of bounds over there, and he looks like he might be hurt. Well, Landreth is down on the sideline. Let's see the hit here. There's a shot right there. Okay, Landreth is back. He's and he's a pretty right. happy man. And he's, he's pleased with he's his effort. Okay. <laughs> At the nine-yard line now, it is first and goal to go for Wheaton North with 53 seconds to play after the pass interception by Mike Landreth. The Falcons of Wheaton North leading 14 to 6, and they feel right now, as it appears, very assured of a victory here and a 4A championship. And again, the frustration of the event, I'm sure, will set in with Joe Marini, who has been here three times trying to win a 4A championship. He's gone to the well and come out dry. Wheaton North not even attempting to get anything into the end zone. Charles Long just letting that clock count down. 45 seconds as it continues to count down in this fourth period. You know, he's not the only one. These fans from LaSalle, Peru, have been calling us at WGN all week. They're ready, revved up, and they were calling me at the hotel this morning, actually saying how ready they were for this game. But once again, they're denied. And here's Joe Marini clearing his bench, getting all his players in on the field. I assume he's got all the seniors in there. Give them a chance to get in the ball game before it's over. Second down and about 11 or 12 yards to go is Long again. Charles Long takes the snap, goes to a knee, takes another loss, lets the time count down to inside 10 seconds, and there will not be another play run. And you'll see a 4A championship team dressed in the white and blue and gold of Wheaton North as they have won. The 4A championship of the Illinois State High School football tournament here at Illinois State University. And again, the red and green of LaSalle Peru denied a 4A championship for the third time. And I'm sure the frustration of it will last for hours to come, Mike. But they did well. They came back, made it a one-point ball game. And then, I guess the one thing that really broke it open or... Gave Wheaton North the edge was the 53-yard kickoff return on the ensuing kickoff after LaSalle Peru had gotten within one, plus a 15-yard penalty tacked on to the return. Well, Bob, that, that was the big play because it was right after uh, LaSalle Peru scored their touchdown, and to come back and score like that, that's the, the icer. So the two teams are now struggling to make their way over to the trophy presentation area to receive their awards, and we'll be back for that and other coverage right after this. Now it's time to pay official tribute to the state champions of the Illinois High School Association Class 4A football tournament. And this is a big moment for the winners. Let's join Mr. John Dowling, principal of Watsika High School and vice president of the IHSA Board of Directors, assisted by Mr. William Yem, principal of Sterling High School, member of the IHSA Board of Directors, and Mr. L.L. L. Astroth, Executive Secretary of IHSA. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association, we'd like to congratulate both of these teams for this outstanding ball game. At this time, I would like to present this medal, symbolic of second place to Coach Marini of LaSalle Peru Cavaliers. And Coach, one for each of your players, coaches. Congratulations. At this time, the second place trophy, Class 4A, LaSalle Peru.
behalf of the Elma High School Association, we'd like to present this first place medallion to Coach Rosalia. And these medals for the rest of your team. And now for the Class 4A Championship, Sweet North Falcons. Well, the victorious team you see before you, the captains of Wheaton North and the Falcons, they'll certainly have a happy trip home this afternoon. And now let's go to Tournament Central. Thank you, Bob. We'll have a summary and some videotape highlights for you on the game just concluded in just a couple of minutes. Our coverage will continue after this. The 4A championship game is now history. Wheaton North won it 14 to 6 over LaSalle, Peru. We'll talk it over for a little bit here and recap things. Well played football game. The win did have a bearing on the way things went. It was a 7 0 lead for uh, Wheaton North in the second period. Lewis Holland went in from nine yards out. They added the point after by placement and led 7 0. In the third quarter, Camilo Valley scored from one yard out as LaSalle Peru took advantage of the win and moved down and made it a 7-6 to six ball game. They tried for the two-point conversion, tried to go ahead by one. It failed, and they trailed by a point. And then Sean Young scored for Wheaton North from 18 yards out. Their point after try again was good from placement. They led 14-6, to six, and that's the way it wound up. And the thing that set it up after the score was 7-6, to six, Rich McDonald returned the kickoff 53 yards, and then a roughness call against LaSalle Peru added 15 yards more to that to set them up the 25-yard line of LaSalle Peru from where they went in and scored. And that was the final touchdown. And after that, Wheaton North's defense was able to do the job, forcing LaSalle Peru to do some passing, which I'm sure they probably did not want to do, but nevertheless forced to. And the wind indeed did have a... Uh, uh, an effect on the way things turned out here. We're going to talk with Floyd Brown and Mike Pyle and get their assessment on the game, and I'd like to know what each one of them thought about the way this one went. I thought it was a heck of a football game, and again, you have to feel for a guy like Joe Marini, Floyd, and it's come uh, down uh, Mike three, three times, times and, yes. uh, and going mm -hmm. home empty, but certainly not without bringing a good football team in there every time. If we were going to have uh, two teams with the kinds of offense and defense to play on a specific day with the weather being what it was, today would have been ideal because both of them are rather uh, conservative in their approach to the game and that they use the full house backfield and they use straight ahead power plays, a lot of good uh, quick blocking uh, and they had strong tough football players on both sides of the field. I was delighted. I thought it was uh, a representative game, two fine uh, teams to be playing for the championship for the 4A and we've had consistent games all the way through down here. Mike Pyle alluded to something during the game, and the fact that uh, in losing Jeff Ostrowski, he's 6'3", 250, an all-state player, but as much as his physical presence was missed, I think his, uh, uh, his great psychological presence was missed perhaps even more. Mike, he's such a leader on the field for LaSalle Peru. Well, I think so, uh, Bob, because uh, the game, because of the conditions was going to be a tough one they have the good running game and you take out the 250 pound offensive tackle great defensive player uh, I think it has an effect on all the players and and then Herb Reese was injured wasn't able to come back into the game but uh, we can't take anything away from the fact that Wheaton North earned that victory they were more consistent on offense they were more consistent on their running game they made the first down plays when they needed to make them Let's check over the statistics now on the ball game. Wheaton North winning the ball game 14 to 6 for the 4A championship. In first downs, Wheaton North had 11. LaSalle Peru had 8. And rushing yards, 168 for Wheaton North, 92 for LaSalle Peru. And total yardage, 165 for Wheaton North, 113 for LaSalle Peru. Now let's take a look at some of the outstanding plays of the game by way of videotape. Down at about five, just inside the 10-yard line, as Wheaton North threatens to score. The pitch to Holland. To the five, and touchdown, number 25, Lewis Holland. They're going after it. Third down and goal to go. They give to Valley, trying to wedge it in, and he, and got, he got there. Touchdown. 
It is third down and three at the 18. And Deshaun Young, and he may go. It is touchdown for Wheaton North from 18 yards out. So as you saw the scoring plays, the first being uh, Lewis Holland going in from nine yards out for Wheaton North. Camilo Valley scored for LaSalle Peru for a yard out. And then the 18-yard run by Sean Young, who had an outstanding day here this afternoon for Wheaton North to make it a 14-6 ball game, which Wheaton North wins the 4A championship. And we have the 5A title game coming up tonight around 7 o'clock. We hope you'll join us for that one here this evening. Good football game. We've seen three outstand two outstanding games in the last two. Uh, the other two, the 1A and 2A, somewhat more scoring. But the last two have just been outstanding. We want you to be sure and tune in tonight for another exciting championship game in the Illinois High School Association football tournament. That one will be for the Class 5A crown. That's tonight on all of these same channels. And now this is Floyd Brown along with Bob Starr and Mike File saying so long for now. This telecast has been brought to you by Illinois Bell, working to keep your telephone system the best in the world. And by your John Deere dealer, where you'll find a complete line of snowmobiles and snow removal equipment. And by 7-Up, America's turning 7-Up. Amico Oil and its local independent dealers who ask you to save a gallon of gas a week. And True Value Hardware, more than just a name, it's their way of doing business. See you tonight. Our administrative engineer here in Normal has been Bob Splithoff. Joe Corneo, Barbara Luce, and George Washbush were our assistant directors. Alan Hall has been our associate director. The directors of this telecast have been Bill Lotzer and Arnie Harris. Portions of this program were mechanically reproduced. This telecast has been produced by NW Air ABH International. Our unit managers have been Darrell Blue, Larry Waters, and Henry Szczuszewski. Our producer has been Don Aries. Our executive producer, Rick Hawley. This has been a WGN television.